Good morning, how's it going? It's me, Captain Energy. Today we're going to take a look at Cubase. More specifically, we're going to use Reason as a plugin with its drums in Cubase and show you how to get those drums to each rest on their own channel on the Cubase mixer. This will make it a lot easier to mix your drums. This was requested by one of my subscribers, so I hope you guys find this useful. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Don't forget to click the alerts button so you'll know when more videos are coming out like this. I look forward to helping you guys out, and I really do try to do my best. If there's something specific that you want to see, don't forget to let me know in the comments. Also, let me know what you think of this training in the comments. And I'm curious how many of you are actually using Reason and using the drums in Reason and would like to know more about using drums in Reason through Cubase. Maybe we'll make another drum kit uh, if you guys are interested. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. All right, here we go. All right, so here we are in Cubase, and I've already taken the liberty of opening up Reason as a plugin. I've brought in Kong Drum Designer and chosen the Deep House as my drum kit, which is it's my favorite of the default four kits they show here. Um, just my kind of fallback is what I usually work with. Um, and then I go down here and I actually created a pattern. Now, the pattern I created is pretty basic, but it sounds like this. It's enough to work with to get us going. And uh, let me show you. Now, if you want to take this drum kit and separate it to individual MIDI rows, not uh, channels specifically, but if you wanted it so that each instrument was on its own row, uh, we could do this quite easily. Now, why would you want to do this? It makes life a lot easier to edit uh, when you have everything kind of set up that way. Right now, if you look at it, we're looking at everything right here. Okay, we got this is my kick right here. That's one of my hi hats. That's my clap, and here's my other hi hat. Oops, right there. Sorry, it's hard to get that with the mouse. Um, but uh, yeah, so we have those three different sounds, and they're all kind of blended into one little pattern here, and that's neat. But it would be cool if I could just see just my kicks in a row and just my, you know, just my hi-hats in a row. Open and closed individually. That would make it a lot easier to edit once I've got everything kind of laid out. When I want to start changing things up and adding, you know, maybe uh, snare rolls and, and uh, crashes or whatever to it, you know. So here we go. If we take this piece right here, just click it. And now if I go up to MIDI... And we go dissolve part, click dissolve part right here under MIDI. What this is going to do is it's going to look at this sound and separate it by pitches. That means technically there is no pitch per se, but it sees it as pitches as C1, C sharp 1, D1, D sharp 1. You know, these are the pitches it's thinking we're, we're looking at. It's not actually doing pitch detection. It's going based on what MIDI notes are being played. And now I can tell it to either dissolve lanes or optimize, uh, sorry, optimize display or dissolve to lanes. I'm going to tell it to dissolve to lanes. Okay. Click OK. And now if we look here, we have each instrument on its own row. Now you kind of have to figure out which one's which because unfortunately what I haven't been able to figure out here is how to label these. Um, it'd be nice if I could actually label the lanes. Um, in some way other than what they are right here. Usually the way I work is I work uh, kick kick up, if you will. I go kick, clap, hi-hats. That's in my head, that's how drums are laid out. All right, so now that we have everything laid out, we have everything uh, on separate channels, we can actually duplicate this if we want to. If I just go right here and duplicate this, hold down Alt, and I'll just drag out another copy. There we go. And now technically I could make any changes I want. I could be, uh, I could take out whatever. I could take out some of the hi hats right here and just change my my loop so that when I play it.
Yeah. So just some cool stuff you can do. Now, the one thing that doesn't happen here, you'll notice, is that when I go to the mixer, okay, you only see the one stereo channel here. This is it right here. If I play it, you'll see it reacting. Um, and there's a, everything's come through one stereo channel. That's fine for most cases. I mean, depending on what you're doing, I mean, you might be all right with that. In a lot of cases, you're going to want to control that. You're going to want to be able to separate your drums, uh, do a little more EQing on them so that they uh, fit better in your mix. And there are a bunch of ways to do that, honestly. You don't necessarily need to do it the way I'm going to show you to do it because Reason offers its own, its own advantages in that area. Because since we're using the Reason Rack, what the Reason Rack offers is... Uh, <laughs> Nothing if not offering flexibility. Let me show you real quick. This is not what we're going to be using, but I'm going to give you a quick little look at this. Uh, I could go right here and I could add, open the browser up. I could add a sub mixer right here between, you know, the player and, and the out, right? So go to utilities. I'm going to drop a mixer in real quick. Hit tab. And now, technically, I could take these drums and run them to this mixer individually on these channels. And I could have whatever I want. I could throw inserts on here and I could do EQing between each channel. I could do a lot of work in the Reason Rack uh, and, and not use the stuff here in Cubase if I wanted to. But the point of this video is to show you how to use the stuff in Cubase. So if you're interested in knowing how to do all of that, what I was just talking about, definitely leave me a note in the comments because I'm happy to show you. It's If you've ever used PhasePlant, PhasePlant and Reason as a rack extension have a lot in common. And uh, I think if you, once you get used to using Reason as a rack extension, you're going to see what I mean. It's just so flexible in what you can do with it it's it's kind of crazy it's almost it almost feels like cheating half the time when i use reason um but anyway okay so here we are in reason next what we want to do is we want to take these sounds that we have right here and we want them all to show up on the cubase mixer right here i want them to show up on this mixer as actual channels that I can automate. Well, how do we do that? First, what we need to do is we need to, let's flip this around again. We need to tell each instrument that is being used to not go to the master effects channel. Because <laughs> right now they're all going through one stereo channel. So what we're gonna do is let's play this, play this clip, okay? And you can see what drums are doing what, okay? So first I'm going to take, I want my bass drum. Tap my bass drum right here, click it. And I want, I'm going to put bass drum on output three and four. I'm going to put clap on five and six. And then hi-hats, since they're in the same, they're the exact same instrument, just two variations of the same instrument, I'm going to put them both on seven and eight. Now, now you don't hear anything. Where'd everything go? All right. So let's flip this around. I'm going to hit tab again. And now what happened is we've taken all those sounds and we've told them to come out of these outputs right here. Here's our bass. Here's our clap. Here's our hi-hats. But you can't hear them because they're not hooked up. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to delete this connection. We don't need it right now. Um, we can put it there for later if we want to. So maybe if there's other, dream, other drums that we want here, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we don't need it. Here's my input. I'm going to drop this or connect this to my kick drum. And there's my kick drum coming back in. And if I want to bring my clap back in, grab that and drop that on one of the outputs. And now we'll do the same thing one more time with the hi-hats. Now they're all coming through. 
but they're all still only there's still only one channel here that's because even though they're all coming through reason they're all still going see these little red buttons here to the main mix and we don't want that we want them to come up to individual channels so now let's turn these off okay now we don't hear anything coming out of those channels. I'm only turning off the ones we have to turn off right now. We have three, four, and three, four, and five, six, and seven, eight. You could turn them all off if you want, but um, I'm just going to do that for now. And I'm going to hide this browser. Okay. All right, I'm just going to move this off my screen for one second. I'll bring it back in a moment. Now, so you've seen that that was hooked up that way. Actually, I'll bring it down here so you can see it still. You see how it's hooked up right here? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, these right now are just kind of hanging out because now we don't have them hooked up to Cubase. They're playing out of this output here, but the input on Cubase is not receiving them. What we want to do next is go right here. I'm going to go to the one, two, third row down here where it says instrument. And then disable with this right here. Okay, I'm just going to click this. Activate outputs. You can see that the output for the stereo out is enabled. That's always enabled. But if we click three and four, now it's saying, "Oh, well, these which are coming out of here and should be going to channel three and four are coming in here. Let's enable that channel so we can hear it." Now we'll do it for the other two. And there it is. Now we have our sounds here. So now when I look at the mixer, you'll see that those channels are represented. Here they are. And if you click edit, we can actually add effects to these. Insert, whatever we want to do to each of these individual instruments so that now we can better mix them into our song. We can also go back over here. If we take all of these lanes right here, right? And I grab right there, I'm gonna fold these up. This just basically hides all the rows into one item or into one row. All right, I'm gonna click this right here, show lanes. I'm gonna hide the lanes. That hides them all inside of one lane. Now, if I go over to edit, and I hit render in place, I'm just going to do render with current settings. And what it's going to do is it's going to render each instrument out as audio. Now, with this having been done, we've got the we're at the place where we have the absolute most control over this this audio you can have. Basically, you can go in here. You can automate the double click. If you double click this, you can see automation lanes. Here we can modify uh, things like the volume. I can go in here. I can go, uh, let's take this down to here. And then we'll jump back up right after there. So if I play it now. See what I'm saying? Um, and this, I'm going to hide that again. And this all shows up on the mixer right up here. And that's how you get your audio rendered to individual tracks so you can control them change them and have in the end an audio representation of your music uh, and also be able to apply any effects or EQs within Cubase. All right, well, that's the end of the video. Thanks for tuning in. I hope that was helpful to you. I know it was helpful to someone because it was requested. So um, if you have any questions beyond what I've shown you here, don't forget to leave me a note in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Also, if the video was helpful, please click the like button so I'll be motivated to continue making new videos. And don't forget to subscribe and click the alerts button so you'll know when new videos drop. If there's anything that you're looking for specifically, leave that in the comments and I will do my best to accommodate you. Have an awesome day. Go make some music and I'll